In this bonus training video, I want to show you how you can run an update query, but based upon a value that somebody enters into a, a form field. And what I'm thinking here for this example is I got my book project table. Let me scroll over. And I've got my retail price for these books. Let's say from time to time I want to be able to run an update or increase the retail price on these books by a percentage. I can go ahead and create a form that the front end user, all they have to do is go ahead and type in a number to increase the retail price by, let's say, 5% and then hit the run button. I'm also going to add a, a button that when they click run will run a macro and that macro will go back and open up the update query all this behind the scenes and then apply that to, well if it's 5% to the retail price. Not just multiply it because if you multiply 5% by 39.95 you get the result of that but it needs to be added on top of the base price here once we get that percentage of the original price. So to get started let me go ahead and close out the first thing I want to do is to create the update query. Come up here, click on the Create tab, go to the Queries group, and then click on Query Design. And I want to add the book project table. Double click, close out. Let me click and drag so we can see all the fields there. Now this is all going to be based upon the retail price field or retail. Double click to add it down below. And then we want to convert this to an update query by coming up here on the Design tab to the Query Type group and then click on Update. Down below it adds the Update To field. Well, how are we going to update this? Well, we want to update the uh, retail number in this query based upon the value that somebody enters into the form field, which, by the way, I have to create that form. But first of all, it's the query. So let me go ahead and right-click to zoom in on the Update To cell. Let me go ahead and type in. Okay, see if this makes sense. I've got the retail field here in the query, and the retail price for a book, one of them, let's say it's $10. Well, I want to take that and add it to the retail price after it's done finished multiplying the percentage that somebody enters into this field in the form increase form, which is a form object. Okay, let me try this again. So here's the address. We've got to create a form. So we're looking at the objects form. We're looking at the specific name of the form, which I'm going to have to uh, name it as you see it here, because it's going to go inside that form and look for this field. And I'll have to create an unbound text box that has this name, R-E-T-I-N-C, for uh, retail increase. So what it's doing is that in that form field, it's going to look in there, this update query, and whatever number that the front end user punches in, like 4, is going to take 4, multiply it by the retail price, and then it's going to add it to the original retail price. Because when you multiply it, you're going to get a percentage, and then you want to add that percentage on top of the original price. Okay, So I can do my calculations here, and then point to where the uh, value of this calculation is going to be coming from in addition to the field that I'm going to be calculating that's already within the query here, the retail field. So let's go ahead and click OK, and then let's click Save, and call it my UPD for Update, Retail Inc, Retail Increase, and click OK. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close out of here now to create my form. Come up here, click on the Create tab, go to the Forms group, click on Form Design. And the first thing I recommend doing is saving your form and giving it the name, the exact same name that you have in your update query. As you recall, right-click, go to the design view, and I have to right-click to zoom in. It's going to be FRM increase, okay? So close out of here, click Save, FRM increase. Okay, so it's going to be pointing to this form here from the update query, and then it's going to be looking for a field. What field? Well, let's go up here, click on the design tab, to the controls group and add our unbound text box. Click on it and then click in the grid down below and there's our field. Double click on it. Let's name the field by coming over here on the Alt tab. And do you remember what the name of the field was? Well, it's going to be, let me delete this, call it R-E-T-I-N-C. For retail increase, hit enter. It accepts the name. So you see what's going on in the uh, update query. It's pointing to an object. What object? The forms. Within the forms, what form? Form increase. And then once it gets there, it's looking for the read ink field here. And then when I go ahead and click on and change the view to the form view, when somebody types in that number and then hits the run button, it'll look in that address, pull that number out, and do the calculations as we just saw in the update query. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and double click in the uh, label here, or triple click, to select the text because we want to be able to let people know what the Sunbound text box is for. And it's going to be for hit enter, retail price increase. Let me hover over the upper left hand corner and click and drag the label over just to the left of the unbound text box. And then finally, all I need to do is to go ahead and add a button to the uh, form here. Because when they enter in the value, I need to have a macro that will run the update query. That will take that from that query. We'll look in the field here and be able to do the calculations in any case. 
Let's add that button. Come up here on the Design tab to the Controls group. Click on the uh, button. Come down here. Click on it. It's going to run the wizard. We don't want it. Click Cancel because we're going to go ahead and tie this to a macro. But first of all, I don't like the name of the button here. Let's go ahead and double click inside it to select the text, delete it, and let's call it our Run button. You can call it whatever you'd like. Hit Enter. And then over here in the corresponding property sheet for the Run button, Let's go to the event tab because when somebody clicks it or on their click, let's click on the corresponding build button. We want it to run a macro. Double click on macro builder. And then here in the macro, on the design tab in the show hide group, I want to be able to show all actions because there are some actions that are only available when I select the uh, all actions here. Like for example, the echo. Let me click in this field and type in ECH. There we go. Hit the tab key. It adds it. And as you recall in an earlier training video, when you have the echo on, when you're running a macro, it shows the results of the macro while it's running. I don't need to see how the sausage is made, metaphorically speaking, but just the end result. So let's go ahead and turn it off and say, no, we don't want to see what's going on with the macro. Just run it and give me the end result. Next, let's go ahead and click on the drop down arrow, and we want it to open. Type in open Q for open query, hit the tab key. What query do we want to open? Click on the drop down arrow. It's our update retail increase. And then we want to view it not in the data sheet, but in the design view. And we want it to be in edit mode. Okay, stay with me on this. We got a few more things we need to do. Let's go ahead and add the next action. We want to go ahead and type in run. Menu command. There we go. As soon as you see it, you don't have to type in everything just until it comes up. Then hit the tab key to add it. Then click on the corresponding drop down arrow and type in run. And then finally, when it's done, let me go ahead and type in close window, hit the tab key. And what object do we want to close? Click on the drop down arrow. It's going to be a query. What's the name of the query? Well, the one that we just opened up to execute it, to run it. And then for the save, we don't want to save it. Okay, so here's a quick explanation of what's going on. We don't want to see what's being worked, all the uh, actions down below, so we Set echo, don't show it, to no. And then we want to open up the query, the update query, in the design view in edit mode. And we want to be able to run that query. And then when it's done running the query, we want to be able to close out. Now, remember when it runs, it's going to take a look at the value that somebody typed in, that field, because the address points right to it. If they type in a 4, it's going to be 4%. They're going to take that, it's going to run it, and multiply it by the retail price field, and then take the percentage of that, the result of that uh, multiplication, and add it on top of the original price. Okay. And then when we're done running it, of course, we don't want to see it, have it, you know, leave a mess here. Just go ahead and close out. I don't need to see it. I just need the end result. Okay. So come up here. Let's save it and go ahead and close out. And that's it. Let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. It's not very clean, but nonetheless, you get the idea. I'll let you clean it up. That's something easy. The coding was the hard part, and really it wasn't that hard. So let's come up here, click on the view button, and there it is. All somebody has to do is go ahead and type in four. Hit the tab key. Now, when they type in 4, if I want it to be a percentage, then I can go ahead and right click, go back in the design view, select the unbound text box, go to the format tab, click on the format drop down arrow, and let's do percent. Okay. Then save it, click on the view button. Let me delete it. Type in 5. There we go. The percent's being added. Now, before I run it, let's see what it looks like. The retail price. Let me open up the book project. Scroll over to the right. Okay, the retail price is $19.95. Let me go ahead and close out. Click Run. Just like that. That was fast. Let's go back to the book project table. And for the retail price, it used to be $19.95. Now it's $20.95. Cool. Let me go ahead and close out. And that way, we don't have to see how it's made, just the end result. Now, there's one caveat to this. If you get a prompt that says, are you sure you want to be able to run the update query? Remember, as you recall in the update query training video, come up here and click on the file, go down to options, click on client settings, and scroll down to where it says confirm. That's probably checked. It wants to confirm the action query. When I click run, I don't want it to pop up and spook the front end user going, huh, what did I do wrong? Let's just not have it confirmed, although it's nice to have it as a backup. So if they type in something and they hit run and they're like, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Well, the confirmation will come up, in which case they can click cancel. But for me, I'd rather not have it being confirmed and trust that they'll do a, an accurate job. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos.
And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.